um, I got to know uh, your your Telegram channel okay, uh, mm-hmm. through my boyfriend. So I just like try it out okay. and then just follow the tips. Uh, mm. But so far, uh, so from the, the PDF that you sent, I know there's some uh, indicators that I use uh, that's really similar. But mm-hmm. I think um, from the indicators like uh, Weaving Average, MACD, uh, mm. RSI, the usual one, but I don't seem to see the trend properly. It's like, um, what, what I see like, from the tips from, mm. uh, from your channel, it's, uh, it's going on. Because uh, I think it's too volatile. It's a like, very trendy kind of pattern. So mm. uh, when I see like, eh, the, the entry point is like, going downwards, so we, got, we are going sell. So mm. um, I've heard other tips where uh, when it's going down, they actually go the opposite. Mm. So I'm not sure which one to follow. Okay. Yeah. So um okay. So seems like uh, I think you struggle with uh, identifying the trend uh, for a particular currency pair. Am I right to say? Hmm. Okay. So I think the first thing uh, you need to understand about um trading right is that uh there are different time frames. Okay. Yeah. So um the time for example you can see my screen right? Can you see my screen? Yep. Okay. So right now uh, we are looking at a uh, euro dollar. Okay. This is a H four chart. Okay, mm. so the H4 chart, the trend might or might not be the same as the chart in, for example, a weekly uh, time frame. Mm. So you do have uh, different time frames. Mm. Okay, so what happens is that sometimes, you know, uh, even if you use the same exact method that uh, we trade, uh, you might get a different analysis because it depends on the time frame that you are trading. Yep. Yep. So for us, uh, generally, if you are new, I think the best way to start is always start with the H4 over here. Okay. Mm. Right. Then, uh, then I think if you read the day trading guide, you will know uh, we always talk about market structure. So if we look at this example, for example, you, you know, you have a swing high here, correct? Mm. And you have a swing low, you have a high here and you have a low here, correct? So uh, this mm. is kind of like in an uptrend. This is a, a bullish market structure. Mm. Yeah, do you struggle with this? Do you have any problems with like identifying this? So far, uh, because I, because I have a lot of things to do, so very passive. Okay. So when uh, the signal is out, so I just follow. But there are a lot of times where um, I think I didn't close fast enough. Uh, mm-hmm. Like, or maybe I closed too fast. Because okay. when, when I checked, because yeah, I was busy with my work, then come back, <gasps> it's <laughs> at loss. <laughs> then yeah. I'm like, uh, yeah, I don't know when to, when, even when it's profit, I don't know, should I close it? Because like the next time I come, come back, it became lost already. So like, uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, okay. So normally, uh, this past, like I think three, four weeks, the market has mm. been like, choppy. So choppy, yeah. it goes up, it goes down. And uh, that's probably also why I think uh, you, you see your, your account is in the green, right? Or in the blue. If you use Meta Trader, mm-hmm. it's in the blue. And then after that, you mm-hmm. know, uh, it goes back. It goes back in the yeah. red, right? And then, you know, it just goes nowhere. Mm-hmm. So uh, because, you, you know, you tell me you're working and you have problems like um, you can't really see the charts. Then the other advice mm-hmm. I have for you is uh, don't trade the H4 then. Uh, do, 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 the, do the daily. Oh. Yes, do the daily. Okay. So uh, if you read uh, the day trading guide, right? In fact, uh, that strategy, strategy is actually a daily strategy. Means you look at the daily mm. flows. Mm. Mm. Okay. So, because uh, I saw follow my uh, friend's suggestion, He's, uh, he said, oh, you're a beginner. So I think you better not hold trade. So if possible, you go for M30. So like 30 minutes. Oh, um, okay. Not too good. Uh, let, let, me, let me explain. <laughs> okay. Uh, let, let's, let's just be very logical. Okay. Let's say, um, okay. Let's say that uh, you, you have the month chart, you have the weekly chart, you have the daily chart, uh, H4, mm. H1 and uh, M30, M15. Okay. So most mm. people, uh, they see as in most uh, gurus, so-called, they teach you to look at all these kind of time frames, right? Monthly, weekly, mm. daily, H4, H1. Uh, M30, M15, correct? Mm. So the lower down the time frame you go, right, you need to analyze higher time frames. So you make your job more complicated. Mm. 
Do you, you know what I mean? Because mm. ideally, you, you, you want to align all the time frames uh, in the same direction. So your best probability trade is going to be when the monthly says is bearish, the weekly says is bearish, and the daily says is bearish all at the same time. Mm. Okay, but if you go down the lower time frame, then the probability of every single time frame saying that you know uh, it's bearish is going to be very very difficult. It's going to be very low, isn't it? Mm. Yeah. So uh, coupled with the fact that you know you say you can't really see the charts, I think um. You know, looking at the charts while working, you know, 30, M30 is, is a bit too, uh, I don't think it's suitable for you. Yeah, heart attack. Oh. <laughs> yeah, so, so I think stick with the daily because uh, daily wise, uh, honestly, daily levels are very clean. Uh, what do I mean by clean? Um, mm. like in this euro dollar, right, you can see the resistance very clearly. Okay, you can see over here, right, this is the level, uh, this is a recent high, correct? Mm-hmm. You can see the recent low. It's just, the levels are just very clear. So right now, price is uh, being resisted at uh, you know this level here. Mm. Yeah. So if you go down to, for example, the uh, uh, just a moment, you go down to the H one, it gets more messy. So the lower down time frame you go, the the harder it is to you know spot good levels, and uh, especially if you do not have the experience, right, uh, it can be very stressful as well. It can cause you a lot of losses. Mm. Mm. True, because um, when when it's like in a bigger time frame, I should be like, okay, it should uh, it hasn't hit the the ceiling yet. Okay, so I sh I should be really chill. So when I go to a smaller time frame, like eh, uh, like losing a lot already leh. Should I? Because when when you said it like this, right? So my SLTP is like really far away, right? So uh, as, uh, a, daily? as a as a daily chart, mm, yeah, for daily chart. Yes, so everything is relative, right? So of course, if you mm. check H1 chart, then uh, your take profit and your stop loss is going to be relative to a H1 chart, which is probably like 20 pips, 30 pips. But if mm. you're doing, uh, say daily movement, and let's say uh, you are buying here and you're selling here, then here to here is like 200 pips movement. Mm. So it's relative. So of course, you, uh, your stop loss for the daily chart is going to be wider than uh, the uh, H1 chart. Mm. Mm. But you do know how to do position sizing, right? You, you don't risk the same amount, right? Do you know how to do that? So, so far, I'm just trading like 0 0.01, but I can also like just one trade can lose like $10. Then I'm like, ah. Mm. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, but I think it's, uh, I mean, because your account is small now, so you probably do 0 0.01. But I think it's a sort yeah. of habit to, you know, to know how to calculate your position size. So for example, mm. let's assume, let's assume that um, um, you are doing, uh, say, you are, let's just say you're doing a 10K account, okay? Mm. So um, you're going to, tr let's say you're going to raise 1% per trade, okay? So 1% mm. per trade equals to $100, correct? Mm. Okay, so if you're going to raise $100 per trade, uh, if this trade has a stop loss of 30 pips, okay, versus a trade that have a stop loss of 100 pips, if you enter the same position size for both, then your loss is going to be bigger if uh, your trade gets stops up. Mm. Yeah, so you can, you can see the importance of why you need to, uh, you know, you need to size your position properly. Yeah, lo, that's the thing. Like, uh, actually, I had like a thousand mm. something as mm. as for starters. La. Mm. Then it's now down to like 300 something. <laughs> oh no. Yeah, so I haven't been able to like go past like 400, like for two, three months already. Mm. The past so, few weeks um, have been tough, to be honest. Yeah, the past few weeks. A bit tough. Yeah. But, yeah. So I, I did because uh I see you always reminding the members like okay one percent uh, of your trade so I I'm very conscious about it so when it's like ten dollars already then I'm like a bit kanjong yeah. uh, should I close it now but there are a lot of times um maybe I don't understand the the pairing maybe mm. that one is a very volatile one I should like just chill maybe it will go go back down or go back up mm. uh so yeah is there any tip for beginners like me. Uh, okay, volatility, right? Okay, so generally, mm. volatile pairs will be a pound. 
pound. Uh. Pound is yeah. generally very volatile. Okay. Yeah. Uh, pound crosses. So if you know you are the kind that you cannot take that kind of, you know, like uh, you see price move too fast, you, you can't take it, right? Your heart can't take it. Um, then ideally you want to avoid pound crosses. So like pound mm. yen, pound kiwi, pound Aussie, you see? Let me show you. Mm. Uh, this kind of, this kind of pairing. You want to uh, avoid this. Okay. Uh, this is what chart? This is a this pound is... Aussie. This is daily chart? Uh, okay. Yes, this is daily. So another tip I have for you is uh, you can uh, do the um, indicator, which is an uh, average true range. Okay. So uh, the average true range mm -hmm. is an indicator that shows you uh, like one day how, how, how many pips does the currency move on average. Mm. So in this case, uh, this ATR I'm using uh, 14 days. Okay, 14 days and use this uh, simple moving average, SMA. So how you SMA. read it is uh, right now, uh, you can see at the bottom left here, okay, right here, mm. okay, it's uh, 0 0.01238, okay. So how you read this is that uh, the average movement across the last 14 days, daily movement is 123 pips. Mm. Mm. So, so can, I, can I kind of judge like, okay, my SLTP should have a range like that so yeah. I wouldn't lose too fast? Yes. So uh, one thing that you can do, uh, is a, it's a tip also for you. Uh, if you want to be extra safe, right, uh, since you know that uh, like, the next daily movement, it's about 123 pips, right? If you want to be mm. very, very safe, uh, whenever you enter, let's say you, you buy here, right? Mm. You want to buy here. Then you can set your stop loss as a uh, one ATR, which in this case is uh, one, two, three pips below your entry point. Mm. Mm. But uh, I don't like to do that because when you do that, then your stop loss is very wide. So if you have yeah. a big stop loss, right, then uh, for you to get very uh, big reward trades, for example, high risk to be, sorry, high reward to risk trade, right, uh, it's very difficult. Because if you are risking, for example, 100 pips, correct, and the currency only moves 100 pips a day, right, at most, you, at best case scenario, right, you're going to make one is to one risk to reward. But if mm -hmm. you, know, you can try to get in on a trade with 30 pips, and this trade, uh, this currency has the potential to move 100 pips, then uh, you are getting about 1 is to 3.3, okay? Which means that uh, every dollar you trade, uh, you can, ex I mean, if, if price hits the target, you're going to make uh, $3, $3.33. Mm. Mm. Okay, so like your recommendation mm. would be, yeah, if I trade like a 0 0.01, and mm. I'm setting it like this, $3, $3 would be, okay, I should, close and get some profit already. Mm. Like secure the profit. Yeah. So uh, when it comes to like trade management, right? Uh, yeah. The risk, I think I get a lot of emails about uh, trade management and you know how to manage your trade. But uh, yep. the problem with trade management, right, is it's very personal. Like, you know, mm. there are some people who they like to swing big, means that uh, small profit they don't want to take. Okay. Mm. There are some people yeah. like myself, who want to lock in the profit. Mm. So there is no wrong or no right. It just depends on the psychology. You know what I mean? Like Yes. If, if I, I, are... I read yeah, I yeah. go to watch your video. <laughs> I haven't get the full thing yet because I think I'm too kanjong. So like a lot mm -hmm. of times uh uh I will close too fast or too slow and then uh I didn't secure my profit. Mm. <sighs> so a bit sad lah. like there was once uh i got like 40 dollars like for 10 trades then I got 40 dollars like <gasps> but then i i i was thinking okay i have to wait because uh, uh no one said close now so when i waited it's it went down to 23 so i always I always hate myself for that so i don't know how to how to <laughs> <laughs> how to do like really secure my profits lah. Mm. So let me ask you a question. Let, let me see if uh, you have a good understanding of how trading works. Do you okay. think it's possible to make the, the right decision every single time? No. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. So I think you, you, you got to learn to, you know, sometimes you make good calls, sometimes you make bad calls, right? I mean, that's just part of trading. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just 
do your best, right? Do your best. Make the best decision you have. If you make a wrong decision, right, just move on. Right? As long as uh, you control your risk, uh, the decision can't really hurt your account. It's only when you do, you know, silly things like, um, you know, you have a $1,000 account and you risk like uh, $300 a trade. Then uh, that is the kind of trades that can yeah. really uh, break, break you, you know? So yeah, so far I still maintain here. <laughs> Uh, you, you know, like, do you watch sports? You know, like tennis? Mm -hmm. Yeah. If you watch how professional athletes play, right, uh, when they, you know, they make a mistake, for example, they hit the ball uh, out, you know, it goes out of the court. Uh, you mm. don't see them worrying about it. You know, they just, oh, next shot. You know, they, they are in the zone, meaning that they are just focusing on the next shot, the next shot. And I think that's a good uh, perspective to take towards trading. Right, uh, you just look at your current position style, you played the best, if it's a loss, you just focus on the next one, the next one, the next one, and the next one. Mm. Mm. Okay. So, uh, like, I really hope that uh, today's session can find out, like, what's the best trading uh, style for me. Uh, oh. Like, I, I, I seriously wanted to see, like, how to see the uh, support resistance properly, but the the pattern nowadays is like really trendy, so I don't know. I can I just only use one line to, tuck, like, mm. estimate lah. Yeah, so I'm not sure whether it's correct. Uh, so okay. I depend a lot a lot on the tips. So. Mm. Okay. Uh, just a moment. So uh, just now I also gave you a tip. So you always want to start with the uh the, the daily day one. The daily is the day one. Us, right? Mm. Yeah. Yes. Then just uh trade off the daily, really just trade off the daily. So like in this case over here right now, correct? Uh, euro dollar is resisted. Mm. Uh, it's doing a very nice uh pin bar right now. You can see. Mm. Yeah, but the only issue is that uh right now it's a uh, ten ten nineteen p.m. Okay, so uh the candle hasn't closed yet. So there is still you know there is still a potential for price to uh you know close above here. Mm. Okay. So ideally, what you can do is you can just wait for um, wait for the market to close, and then you can pop, pop, possibly take a short position here. Is this selling? Like looking at this, mm -hmm. would it be a sell? Uh, we have to wait for the candle to close. Uh, if it closes mm. like that, uh, yes, you can consider selling. Okay. Mm. Uh, if you read the uh MP strat MP strategy, right? Just a just a quick recap. Uh. M stands for market condition, right? Mm. E stands for price level, and E stands for entry. Okay, so let's just go through uh, you know, each of this here. Okay, so over mm. here, uh, price is actually in the uptrend. Okay, so you can see over here that uh, this is a low, right? This is a high. This sorry, this is a high. This is a low. This is a higher high, and this is a higher low. Correct. Mm. So ideally, you want to be buying, correct? But right now, you're in mm. consolidation. Okay? Yeah. So, of course, the best setup you can do is you can buy at the bottom of the range. That is the best setup. But right mm. now, by resistance, it's up to you whether you want to take the so-called counter trend uh, sell. That's up to you. Some people, they don't like it. Some people, they like it. So, mm. I, can't, I can't make that call for you. But if, let's say, you, 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 you put over here that market condition is uptrend, right? Okay, so uptrend but consolidating. So in a consolidation, you want to sell high and buy low, correct? So the next thing is uh, you want to look at the price level. Okay, so the price level I mapped out for you already. Over here, you can see about 1.11 and uh, 1.34, uh, 1.13498. Mm. Okay, if you cannot identify the level, you struggle, the trick I have for you is to change to a line chart. Okay then you can, should be able to see it very clearly. You have a pick here, you have a kind of like a pick here and a here. Okay? Mm -hmm. What you can do is that uh, you can just draw multiple lines if uh, you're not too sure. Okay? Because remember that uh, support and resistance is never a single level. It's always a zone. Mm. Okay? So you have something like that. So you know that price at resistance. So price level is about, um, you know, maybe 1.13498. Right. Okay. So the last step of the entry is uh, you need a nice candle candlestick pattern, which uh, hasn't happened yet. Mm. Okay. So this is how you apply uh, the strategy. 
Mm. And then, uh, okay, I'm very noob. Like, what, what, when is the market closing and open? Because there are a few markets, right? Okay. Uh, I'm not sure. Depends on your broker. Uh, different broker, you know, because uh, Forex oh. is a regulated market, right? So different broker will close at different times. But uh, most oh. of the broker uh, should be 5 a.m. 5 or 6 a.m. Depending on your broker. So 5 a.m. GMT uh, 8 uh, our time. GMT 8. So think of it this way, okay? All you need to do is every, every morning when you wake up, chances are when you wake up, uh, unless you wake up super early, right? unless you wake up at like 4 a.m. or 3 a.m., but if you know you're like a regular person and you wake up at probably six or seven, uh, by then the candle will have closed already. Mm. Then what you can do is just before you go to work, you just look at the charts and you just enter in a trade and then you forget about it for the rest of the day. That's uh less stressful if you trade the day chart like this. So it means the start of the day, uh, because there's a it's a new candle already. So based mm. on the pattern, I said, I said yes. SLTP at that. Uh, entry, uh, like let's say, yeah. let, let's say, let's say the market closes like this, right? And you want to short, then uh, you can do something like um, this. Oh, so uh, let me just zoom out for you. Something like this, okay? Oh, so good because I use my phone only. Oh, <laughs> it's so limited. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the, the phone is definitely limited. So, uh, do you mean if you know on the go you can don't trade, but in the morning I think it's a good, uh, you know, it's a good idea to, uh, just look at uh the charts and then, uh, just enter the position. Mm. Yeah, actually being busy is a good thing, honestly. If if you have a day eh? job, because you don't look so much, you don't get so you know, uh, emotional. And sometimes I find myself mm. stare at the charts too long, right? Uh, it's terrible. Yeah, because yeah. uh. Like when it's off work, I'm supposed to prepare my work. Then when I look at it, I cannot concentrate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so so I think stick to the day chart, right? And uh, regarding analysis, remember that uh, there is no end to analysis, right? remember. You can spend 100 hours to analyze your chart, but the market is still going to go wherever it wants to go. Yeah. Yeah, so as long as uh, you know, you see it, you manage your risk, uh, then just take the trade. Um, just want to ask, like, all my indicators, right? Uh, mm. I still can't seem to, like, predict it properly. I, I know, like, just what, what you said just now, like, okay, analysis is, like, non-stop one. So, um, mm. like, is there, like, uh, like, moving average, I was taught, like, uh, if it's under or, like, above the, both mm -hmm. of the lines, then I can actually go for that trend. So most of the time it's okay, quite accurate. But then when I pair it with others, like what's the mm. thing? The MACD ka? Is it the MACD or RSI? What that uh, one I cannot pick. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so uh, correct me if I'm wrong. Correct me if I'm wrong. But it yeah. sounds like you are actually making your trading a uh, decision based on the indicator. Am I right to say? Um. Other than tips, I, I look at the indicators a lot long. Mm. Okay, this, this is a very, very, very big mistake. Okay, very, very big mistake. Oh, no. I stress this a lot of times, uh, but I think it's, it's, it's a bad habit to kick. But always remember that uh, indicators is the last thing you do, not the first thing you do. Oh. So a lot of times, you know, like um, how people normally trade, right? Perhaps you are doing this as well. Uh, let's say you're mm. doing the uh, MA20, right? Moving average 20. Uh, you mm. see the moving average, you just buy. You say, oh, price is above, you just buy. You never analyze the, uh, you know, the market condition. You just use the indicator to buy. Mm. Okay? Uh, it shouldn't be that way, okay? Your indicator is the last thing that you do, not the first thing you do. Means, uh, just now, remember, I run you through the process, which is the MPE, right? Okay. Yeah. So you do this. You do this, you do this, you do this, then if you want to do indicator, you do this. Okay? Not this. Not this. Okay? Not this, this way. Or worse still, not just this. Okay. Yeah. Uh, you, you, you cannot just, you know, like let's say you use the MACD, right? 
the MACD. Mm. Uh, you know, uh, you don't do anything and you just look at, oh, here, this is a sell. Oh, this is a buy. Oh, this is a buy. Uh, this is a sell. No, you, you cannot do it like that. Mm. Okay? Because uh, trading is not so simple. If it's so simple, everyone make money. Already. Yeah. Lah. Yeah. So, uh, okay. Oh, what, what was I asking? Oh, the market condition it's uh, based on how they just like naked. I just look at it like, okay, it looks like an uptrend. Mm. Or do I yeah. need like a trend line? Uh, you can use trend line, but uh, actually just look at, uh, as in just see the pattern. Uh, I mean, of course the trend line helps. For example, if uh, you know, you can draw something like this, you know it's more of uptrend. Okay. But uh, generally, I like to look at a major swing high and swing low. So this is obviously a major one. This is a major one. Uh, this is higher. Check swing high swing low. So you can see right now a uh, euro dollar. You see there's some form of hesitation. So just now the candle is looking mm. bearish, right? You see now it's back into kind of like a doji. Uh, that's why it's very important to wait for uh, the candle to close if you are trading the day chart. Mm. And if I'm uh, trading using the day chart, right, then mm. I should wait for how long? Uh? Uh, when is the day chart uh, closes? Yeah, like is it a shorter term, a long trade and that, so. Mm, what, what, what do you mean? Oh, um, like if, let's say it's M30, right, or uh, even like M15, mm. then it's like a shorter time frame, I would close within that day. So, I'm, I'm assuming if it's day chart, then it would be because uh, it have to go up and up yeah. and down like more. It's longer. Huh? Yeah. So wait for. Yeah. yeah. How long would it be? I can't give you a time. I mean, I don't know how, how long the market takes. You know, sometimes it doesn't move. Uh, but uh, I think don't be focused on how long it takes. Just be focused on looking at the price. How does price react? So if let's say, let's assume mm. that you shot over here, right? Okay. Yeah. And then, you know, let's say you're right and price starts coming down uh, somewhere here, right? Yeah. And let's say your target was initially here, correct? But somewhere yeah. in, over here, it starts, you know, it starts bouncing a bit. You know, it starts showing some form of support. Uh, you can choose to exit. Yeah, yeah so, so I think you, you, you need to pay attention. You need to watch it in real time, right? So, uh... I think it's a good practice if you trade a day chart to just every morning just look at it once. I think that's also uh, ideal, right? Because if you will look too much, uh, you tend to uh, mess around with the trade too much. So. Yeah. Hmm. So, Miss, your suggestion is if I uh, trade daily, then hmm. I will just uh, exit or enter in the morning. Yes. So, when I see all oh, the, the candlestick has formed already, then I hmm. decide. Lah. Yep. So another pointer, because I've been training for some time, right, I realized that uh, my decisions in the morning are so better, right? Because uh, when you just wake up, you are more fresh. You think of it, if you, you know, for you, you are working a day job, right? So imagine you work for like eight hours, nine hours, and then you have to, you know, rush home and stuff like that. By the time you are home at like eight o'clock, nine o'clock, you are so tired, right? If I ask you to make certain uh, training decisions, uh, you're not going to be as sharp as, you know, when you just first wake up and, you know, you're alert, you know, you're energetic. Mm. So that's also why I think uh, morning, personally for me, it works better. But uh, I mean, if you're a night hour or, you know, you, you morning, you, you're not that alert, then uh, maybe trading in the night will be better for you. Mm. Oh, yeah. And because, because uh, if trading it daily, so means my SRTP has to set it a bit further, I'm just scared that when I see when I see the chart like the next day like <gasps> it's like losing ten dollars <gasps> or it could be like profiting. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Just adjust your position size. So uh, I mean in this case yeah. you are trading zero point zero one, so you cannot adjust it any mm. little more. But, yeah. but I mean the idea is still the same, right? As long as uh, you control your risk, right? Uh, you should be fine. So the SLTP ratio, uh, what do you recommend? Uh, depends on the market. Uh, depends on the market. Depends right? on the market. Uh. Yeah. I don't really like to set a fixed target. I mean, I, I, I put the fixed target in the uh, the Telegram channel. Right? My team, yeah. some of them, 
uh, they put we, we do put fixed targets there because uh, we want to make it easier for the subscribers to follow. Okay. Mm. But personally, my own trading, uh, I don't like to put fixed targets. I don't even put in a big profit level. I like to, uh, when market goes my way, I like to monitor. You know, sometimes I will scale in, sometimes I will um, slowly scale out. So scaling means in, uh, you buy more. So let's say you are long. Let's say you are long a <coughs> dollar. You add your position. Mm. Yeah, I mean, it makes sense because when you are right, uh, you want to do the big bet. You want to bet more when you're right. Mm. And you know, when you're wrong, you want to slowly cut back. Yeah, about that also. I uh, think... Yeah. Uh, <laughs> sorry. Uh, when, when I don't know whether I'm correct. When uh, the trend is going my way, uh, mm. of course, according to the tips. So, it reached like $3. So, I'm thinking, oh, it, I can just add in more. But most of the time, it's like struggling already. So, mm. it might reach like oversell or overbought at that time. So, I'm not sure when to add because I see a lot of people add in more trades like eh why 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 cannot uh, <laughs> why can't yeah. I, I think that that one is a bit more advanced okay uh, uh, I don't recommend uh, you do it now okay because uh, what happens is that uh, I seen a lot of people right uh, they keep adding mm. they add 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 and yeah. they don't realize that uh, they add to the point that they are risking an entire account you, you know what I mean for me yeah. when I add a trade uh, I will always shift uh, a existing position to break even first so that my overall risk yeah. of the portfolio doesn't be increased. Right? Yeah, if, so yeah for me, like, if it reached... Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, for you, go on. Yeah, if I reach like $3 something, then I will shift to break even like automatically. But I don't know whether... Eh, 30 pips already, right, by then? If yeah. you are so trading just for your one, yeah, it's about 30 pips, yeah. Yeah. So, that's what also I heard like a tip from my friend. So 30 pips put to break even. Then at that point, see whether want to bring in another trade or not. Mm, so yeah. far, the break even works. I like it. <laughs> Maybe psychologically, uh, but, you, yeah. yeah. So, so you have to yeah, so, develop your, mm -hmm. not, not really develop, but you have to, it's, it's like a self-discovery journey, right? You need to understand like what do you like, what you don't like. Mm. Right. I, I think I, 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 wrote, I wrote this before, right? A lot of times people, they jump from strategy to strategy, uh, but they yeah. don't understand that uh, each of us is unique in terms of uh, the way we think, our training psychology, right? So you, yeah. you need to first understand what kind of person you are. Then you look for a system that complements uh, who you are. Because it's very hard to change the way you are. It's easy to train, change your training system. But it's not easy to tr change uh, your thinking. If let's say you are a person who like, uh, you like, you like to capture big trades. If I try to convince you to take small profits, it doesn't work because you are not wired that way, right? Mm. So that kind of person he needs to have a strategy that allows him to find big winners and hold on to it. Mm. Mm. So if you ask me, like you know, a lot of people that write in emails to say what's the best strategy I say I don't even know you right I, I don't know how you think I don't know what you know what what are some of the challenges you face I don't know do you have a lot of time mm -hmm. uh, are you do you want to get big winners or do you only want to uh, you make 20 pips every day like what are your goals you know so it's very difficult for me to give you something when I don't know who you are mm -hmm. Yep. I think I realized one thing it's uh, I have this FOMO attitude like a f fear of miss, me, uh, missing out so when I'm working then the signals come out <laughs> then I'm like oh, I missed out okay wait I'm gonna check the trend first uh, if I miss out then I won't I won't trade lah. but I'm like eh macam okay well, then I trade in then it might not be as what I expected so mm. uh, but overall for now I'm still trying to to get more profit than my losses. La. Loss I can lose like like more than 10, 20 a day, but uh like profit probably like just single digit. Mm. <sighs> but this really yeah. has been hard, really hard. So mm. I, I'm not too sure how long you have been. You say a couple of months, is it? Mm. Yeah, so these few weeks are hard. 
So this is also a good lesson because uh, the market is not always easy and it's not always conducive to trade. So mm -hmm. like our team struggle, right? You know, like sometimes we don't want to trade, but you guys want to trade. So, you know, yes. like we don't really want to send signals out, but if we don't send, you guys are not happy. So it's, <laughs> it's give or take, you know, it's kind of, uh, sometimes yeah. we are like, oh, this is not a good week to trade. For example, um, if you look at the forex calendar, correct? Mm. Next week is going to be a difficult week to trade. Okay, so next week is going to be very difficult because you have uh, all this uh, BOJ policy statement, outlook report. Uh, you have this one. This is the thing that uh, kills a lot of people. This one over here. This whole chunk here. Euro. Yeah, uh, you also have this one over here. So, you have this yeah. as well. So, the, the issues with this kind of events is that uh, this kind of events, they are not hard economic data, meaning that um, anything can happen. Like someone during the, the conference can say something stupid and then the market goes crazy. And that mm. is why a, a lot of institutional players, when they see this kind of weeks, right, uh, they don't actually trade that big because they don't know what, what can happen. Mm. So you don't have those institutional players buying and selling, the price is very weepy. So price goes nowhere, you can't make any money. Mm. Mm. True, true. Yeah, so this... So shouldn't trade. Honestly, mm. if I can say, I wouldn't trade at all. Mm. So it's not like very uh, straightforward. Oh, you see, it's red. Uh, so I can just go, go for sale, but maybe <laughs> cannot find any pairings at all because everything is like red here. Mm. So what you can do is, uh, if you want to trade, you trade after the event. It's clearer. So after 8.30, mm on Thursday. But most people don't want that because that means Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday and Thursday until in the night you're not doing anything. Most people, they cannot do it. You know what I mean? They, they, they trade for excitement. Mm. They don't trade to make money. So, they, they want to trade. I want to make money. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, through experience, I learned really if you can just be patient and wait for this event to happen, then uh, you, you'll get some very nice trades, uh, you know, after after the event. Yeah. Mm. Uh, and I found out one thing is uh, the, the only excitement that I get is from uh, gold. Because gold. gold is really like, oh, go down and go down. You just tell, oh, then you get yeah. profit a lot. But then the downside is when they turn, oh, also very, very painful uh, to, the, to the account. Yeah, a lot of people like gold because it's quite volatile and the leverage is good. Yeah. So a lot of times, uh, a lot of like people with very small accounts, you know, like hundred dollars account. Oh, they they like that they can buy quite big, and then they can see a hundred dollar account goes to the four hundred dollars. That kind of uh, thing. Mm. So, um, How should we benefit from that? Because um, like honestly, a lot of uh saving trades is because the the gold. Oh. <laughs> yeah. I mean, so, if you find that you are more profitable on gold, then you know you want to stick stick more to that. So, uh, oh, well, that one is very uh short time frame one. <laughs> that if I keep on looking at it, I would really have more white hair. <laughs> so, do you journal your trades? Do you do you, do you like record down the trades you take? Not really. Eh. Okay. Should I? You need to do. Okay. okay. Uh, if you're right. uh, making money in the market, you need to do it. Okay? Mm. Uh, a lot of times, uh, your strategy, or however you trade, right, it might be profitable. It's just that you need to make some tweaks. For example, uh, maybe you find that if you, most of the time, if you trade during the London session, you lose money. You can just take them out and then your results will skyrocket. You know, sometimes it's just one or two tweaks. But if you do not journal your trades, and you do not write down, you know, uh, the trades you take, the, what time you play, what time you enter them, uh, what currency pair, what's the result. Then you do not have all this kind of information. Oh, something like uh, what you all did, like the weekly report? Yeah, but of course, uh, this one is just for the, uh, you know, for the public, right? Uh, mm. I, we do spend more time uh, breaking it down. For example, uh, this is our current week's results. So um, mm. this is just a template. 
So uh, every week, mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, we'll just add, update this. So we, we look at, um, we look at, uh, for example, which training session do we make the most money, you know, uh, and if you've been in our channel for some time, you know that uh, Wednesday night is one of the best time for us. After, it's the whip so Wednesday? Yes, that, that's for us. Based on our trading style, uh, that's the best time to trade. Uh, Wednesday, Thursday is also a good day. For example, today is Thursday. It's also good because after whip so Wednesday, is trend Thursday. Uh, market tends to trend on Thursday. Yeah. So based on our own results, uh, we kind of prefer to trade on Wednesday night and Thursday. But mm. we realize that all this kind of so-called information, we get this kind of information by analyzing our own results. You know, these are things that you yeah. don't get by studying a book. And it's kind of like unique to us because it's our results. It's the way we trade. So if you do not do, you do not do this kind of stuff, then you will miss out on all these kind of insights about your own trading. Mm. I see. So, so far, um, I've been following like the public tips. Mm -hmm. um, and like you've mentioned also, like have to, for, like don't trade more than, more than 1% of the whole thing, right? Mm -hmm. So, Maybe maximum trades that I can go like five. Mm, I don't know. Five means at any one point your account is risking five percent. So that's a bit a lot. Um, mm. personally, I don't like to hold too many trades because I, I I don't like I don't like the idea of juggling so many. I cannot focus. Mm. So, but that's me. Some people mm. they like to diversify because technically, if you take more trades, especially if the trades are not correlated. Right, meaning that uh, yeah. just for example, let's say you are bearish on a dollar yen, you don't short every single yen because if you short every single yen pair, it's the same as taking one big trade. But if let's say yeah. a position in dollar yen, then you have a position in euro dollar, and then you have a position in maybe pound franc. Uh, that's uh, it's still fine. It's it's kind of uh, still more diversified. Oh, yep. I see, cause I, but. It's okay, like, let's say GBP, right? Mm. Every, everything is buying, like, a few days ago. Everything is going skyrocket, going up. And then, like, nearly every pairing is like that. And then, like, hey, should I just go for buy, like? Should I buy another one? Like, another? Mm. So, uh, is that too risky? <laughs> um, okay. You, you are familiar with this, uh, FinBase, right? Uh, I recently saw the video. Yeah, so uh, this one, this event, yeah. so it's free. So um, right. this week, the most part, uh, the pair that most and most will be pound cap. Okay. Yeah. I'll think of it this way, okay. Uh, yeah. In a game of, you know, let's say horse betting, right? So, you know, yeah. there's like a bunch of horses betting. You can only yeah. bet which horse will win. Kind of like before the game, right? Before before the, the the race starts, you make a bet whether like you want which horse, right? Do you want a pound horse? Do you want a cat horse, right? <laughs> In trading, right? Can you have a clear winner and then you bet and you still get good odds for it? Because if you know, like let's say you bet soccer, right? Let's say uh, Arsenal versus Chelsea and it's uh, Arsenal is winning three zero and it's the eighty five minute. <laughs> if you bet Arsenal. <laughs> At the 85, yeah. your probability, your not your probability is very high, but your payout is very low. Agree? Mm. But in trading, yep. not like that. In trading, you can through managing your stop loss and take profit, you can bet on a high probability trade and still get a very good uh reward to risk ratio if you manage your position well. Mm. It is the only kind of like so called betting system in the world which you can actually rig the you know the probabilities for you so mm. you, you, you do not just you know just look at these two and then straightforward go and buy pound cat you know that, that's not how to use it okay i keep stressing this you want to use this as a reference then you go into pound cat and then you look for potential entry you look for a good setup mm. right like maybe let's say you um you 
you, you are looking to buy, you just look for some levels to buy. So maybe if you use the uh, MP level, you would have gotten this level here, right? This is a swing high. In this case, mm -hmm. probably would have been a good trade to see this swing high here. Breakout, we can. Yeah. Then if you had do something like, um, you know, some arbitrary stop loss, I don't know how much you use, right? Maybe something like that. Mm -hmm. In a sense, you are betting on the strongest currency pair against the weakest currency pair and you have a very good risk to reward ratio. Mm. Yeah, so that's how you use it. You do not just, you know, uh, close your eyes and just uh, just buy. That's not the way to do it. Like, uh, from here means you're predicting like an entry point. So if it didn't hit, like the buy or sell, eh, is what? Uh, buy stop? Uh, I'm just assuming buy that limit. if you record it here because this is a swing point, right? This mm. one resistance act, acted as support. Because mm. mm. if uh like what you're suggesting me uh if I do daily, I trade it in the morning, mm. and then uh, I should set like I probably shouldn't set a buy now or sell now or I should yeah. like put um uh, like oh when it reached that point then they will automatically buy or sell. Well, you you can do a limit order if you want. Uh, Mm. Yeah, you can. Because based on what you write right here, like, oh, I draw a line. Okay, maybe that point is the best one. Mm. Yep. So, the, limit. Uh, the main point is uh, do, do not use this to just enter blindly. But you still need to do your analysis. So, if you are doing the NP yep. strategy, uh, right now, uh, price actually uh, is in an uptrend. Okay, let me, let me just do the complete analysis for you. Okay. okay. So this is a bottom. This is uh, first first bottom, second bottom. So this yep. is a bottom, correct? Mm -hmm. Neckline is broken. This is the neckline broken, right? So uh, we have a bullish reversal. Okay, we also mm -hmm. have yeah. Uh, this is a low. Okay, this is a high. Okay, this is mm -hmm. a lower. Sorry, this is a higher low, and this is a higher high. Correct. Yep. So conclusion is we are in uptrend. I just recognize this as the W. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So condition is uptrend. So what's the next one? Price level. Correct? Yep. So you look at the uh let me just clear this first. Okay, so you look at uh this 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 spike high here and this one here is very prominent. This and this. Okay. Notice that this upper line, if you look left, it was also kind of, uh, you know, supported here previously. Yep. Yeah, so this is a good zone. This entire zone is a good level. So what the price do? Mm -hmm. Price broke above, we tested it. So mm -hmm. price level would be uh, 1.70, okay, plus its psychological number. 1.70 level. Round digit. Mm -hmm. Means you round it off or uh, I mean yeah plus minus so it's oh. this level here is 1.70 right and it's a psychological yeah. number so this is a strong level price are broke above close back below so uh the last one is entry okay so if you read the day trading guide they it teaches you that uh, entry can be a candlestick pattern so right now price it's uh candle haven't closed Okay, but if this candle were to close like this, then this would be a bullish uh, engulfing pattern. This would be a bullish engulfing pattern over uh, this uh, small candle here. And then you can buy when the candle closes. Hmm. Okay. Uh, take profit, uh, recent high here. Okay. So it's a bit tight. So you need to uh, manage your risk to reward. If um, let's say the risk to reward doesn't make sense, let's say price close like this, price close here then uh, it doesn't really make sense because your take profit is so small and your uh, stop loss has to be below the uh, candle low, which is somewhere about here. Doesn't make sense. Mm -hmm. Okay, so depends on where price close. If let's say price close somewhere here, uh, it, it's still decent, 1.26 is still okay. It's not the best, but uh, you just want to make sure that uh, you do not have a scenario where you know you are risking like, uh, you know, you are risking 130 pips to make uh, 38 pips. It just doesn't make sense. Mm. Okay. Correct. 
guy, I find myself a lot of times it's like this. Okay lah, earn a bit, you go well lah. Then the SL, uh, I hope it won't go, go continue, go lower lah. <laughs> I think this is bad. Yeah, because you cannot pay your, uh, you cannot pay for your uh, losses if uh, you do it that way. Like all, yeah. the, all your losing trades, you cannot pay off uh, the cost of it. Oh, I have one more very important thing. Um, so I, I found out, I think yesterday or the other day, uh, one of the, one of the JPY trades, uh, mm. it was, it was going the other way. So yeah. you'll quickly say, okay, close it. And then you go to the, go to the, uh, the opposite trend. Mm. So, um, I try it myself, like in other trades, like, eh, it's like going the other way around. Eh? So can I just close it and go so that I can salvage some of the losses? Mm. But like Liang Tobu out Liang Tobu Dao and like cannot reach anywhere. Yeah. yeah. How to how to gauge it? It's very Is tricky. There a way? It's very tricky. tricky because uh sometimes right, uh if you do what uh we try to do, sometimes you get weak yeah. So there has been instances where we buy, we lost money, we sell, we lose money, we buy back, we also lose. Yeah. <laughs> I want to cry. <laughs> yeah, so That's what happened. So as a team, right, we have kind of like a so-called a, a, a guideline for us, right? Because uh, we don't want this kind of thing to happen. Uh, normally, we'll yeah. try twice. You know, if uh, we get it wrong twice, then uh, we just move on. We're not going to touch a pair. Because if uh, we lose money twice yeah. on the same pair, that means, uh, you know, we probably are not reading that pair correctly. Uh, we don't want to be touching it. Mm. Uh, you don't want to buy, lose money, sell, lose money, you go and buy again and then end up you are just getting weak. Up, down, up, down, up, down, down, and then you know, just, just move on to another pair. Right. Mm. So what's the, what's the usual routine when you go through all the pairing? Um, you like, okay, this one can go, can, can trade. Um, let me see. Uh, so normally I'll just uh, look at the majors first because uh, majors you can see oh. here, the majors will, yep. will will show you uh kind of why it's moving. So if for example you see that uh like right now you see that Aussie uh, Aussie dollar is uh minus zero point three five correct uh three three percent. Mm. So you know that Aussie is very weak. Then I uh, will take a look at uh, Aussie pairs. So we'll look at Aussie dollar, oh. Aussie yen, uh, so on and so forth. I see. Yep. Is it uh, because they, they move more than the other pairings, so they are considered the majors? Uh, no, no, no. Uh, they are majors oh. because they are paired against the dollar. Forex majors are, are paired against the dollar. So like dollar cat, Kiwi dollar, Aussie dollar, yen. Uh, these are FX major. Your FX minor will be like pound Kiwi, pound Aussie. Uh, then your yen crosses will be like, of course, a euro yen, a pound yen, cat yen, so on and so forth. Okay. Actually, the quite What's your suggestion eh, for like, uh, which pairing should be, should be more suitable for like a beginner like me? Uh, Play safe. In a major. If you're not Stick to the majors. Yeah, the major pairs. Okay. I heard um, one of my friends said um, you can uh, like ask asking me la, to trade Aussie because it's quite uh, kind of similar to gold because Aussie has uh, I mean Australia has their own gold mine. Mm. So yeah, so he suggested let's just go for Aussie dollars. Um, the problem with sticking with one currency, right, is sometimes that currency is just not going to move. For example, this week, mm. we say, if you trade dollar cat, it's not going to move. This entire week, it didn't move at all, you see? So if yeah. you this on oh, man. one currency, and you want to trade, you're going to, you know, you're going to force, uh, you see, this entire week, the price hasn't even moved much, see? Right, mm. the high to low is only like 30 pips. The high is 1.36239 and the low is uh, 1.3490. So it's like about like 30, 33 pips movement only for the entire week. That's just crazy. So if let's say it happens on Aussie and you just so fixated on just trading Aussie, 
then you're going to have weeks like this, which uh, is going to frustrate the hell out of you because it's just not going anywhere. Mm. Then uh, I watched one of the recent videos of uh, about this Finvis. Yes. It's, it, it's only up until eh? daily. Daily, weekly, monthly, then it will be longer than that. Eh, uh, is yeah. it? I don't yeah. know. Yeah. The audience is not really. Yeah. Uh, the best is just use the weekly. Uh, use it on like Wednesday or Wednesday. After the market has moved a bit. Don't use it on Monday because on Monday, the weekly and daily uh, performance will be the same, right? Because the week has just started. Okay. So, because you, you did mention Wednesday and Thursday is a good time to trade. Then at that time, I can refer to Finvis. It will be more accurate. Yep. Yeah. Uh, not, not accurate in the sense that because it, uh, Finvis is not, uh, it's not, it doesn't help you identify the trade setup. It's just telling you that, okay, you want to be looking at pound cap. That's it. Nothing else. Just mm. Yeah. So Got you it. need to analyze the, the charts on your own. Mm. Then, uh, what do you think about holding trades? Like, for example, Friday, I hold one trade and then like, oops, I didn't close it. So I have to wait until Monday. Because by then, I, I have a lot of times like, hey, on Monday, it fluctuates. Mm. So what do you think? Um, you can, you can hold. Personally, I don't like it. Because uh, mm. you can close it and you can always open it. Again. You know what I mean? Like, you can close it on yep. Friday. Monday, just open yep. it again. I, I don't mm. like uh, the idea of uh, you know price, you know if it gets up or gets down and then I get stop out at a very big loss. I mean it happens before. Mm. Uh, mm. It doesn't really get, but uh, sometimes it does get. So when it gets right, you might get hurt quite badly. Mm. Yep. So if it's like that, even is if it's at loss, just close it. Uh, depends. If it's at loss but it's sitting at support, I might hold it. Yeah, so it, so it really depends. I can't give you okay. a hard and fast answer on that. Okay. So, means uh, actually holding trade or not, you still see the, the support resistance? Whether uh, it's there? Yes. Then yes. I decide to close or hold up. Yep, something like that, yeah. So, a lot of things is, it takes a lot of judgment. So, you cannot have... Yeah. You cannot have hard and fast rules, you know. I, I'm a person who likes rules as well, right? You like to have a so-called model solution, but I, I think when it comes to trading, it's, it's just not possible. You know, I, I remember mm. when, uh, you know, I was learning from a mentor of mine. I would ask her questions yep. what, you ask, what you're asking me right now. And then <laughs> uh, she always tell me it depends. And, you know, I hated the answer. I asked her, do I do this? It depends. Uh, should I manage my trade? Like, it depends. And then I, after that, you know, now that, you know, I'm like, like the roles have reversed, right? I'm trying to help you. I can mm. see the frustration that, I mean, I understand the frustration that you face, but from my end, I also, you know, it's not I don't want to give the answer, but um, it really depends, you know. It, it really depends. Yeah, I understand. Mm. I just really hope that I can make use of the things that you taught me and yeah. apply it. <laughs> yeah, it takes time. Yeah. So you should really give yourself, uh, you know. Don't mm. put so much stress on yourself. Try to trade smaller, right? Mm. And I said I overanalyze. Oh uh, yeah, I, I do have a video on that as well, so you can check that out. Mm. Yeah. Okay, so I think uh mm -hmm. for today. So uh, yep. if you have any questions, uh, you're always uh, welcome to uh, just email us. We we'll do our best to address it. Right. Okay. Yeah, just, Thank just, you, Victor. Yeah, just trade safe. Uh, just watch your risk. Okay, you can, can't get it right 100% of the time, but uh, you can manage your risk well. So that's within your control, so just make sure you do that. Yep. Okay. Thank you so much. No problem, I'll see you the channel. Okay? Yep, yep. Thank, thank you. you. Okay, thank you. All right. Bye-bye. Okay,